Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I don't think I have anything to talk about before we get into the questions from last week's video. So I'm just gonna jump right in. Other than the fact that it's a gorgeous day today, I think our high is 88, so we're up in the sun porch again, it's pleasant. We are um, going right back into the 106 degree weather though. Starting tomorrow, it's Lame. like, well, it goes 99, 100, 106, 106, 106, 102, 199. That's what our next week looks like. So if we skip another day, like we skipped posting today, not because of weather, but because we celebrated my sister's birthday this weekend. So we just didn't have quite enough time to get our video all done and ready. Um, but this week we'll see, I don't know. I told Aaron, maybe on one of those hot days, we should like plan a day to go out and do something fun. Yeah. Anyway, date day. a date day. So that might happen, we'll see. Let's jump into the videos from last week. First one was checking out a new garden center and antiquing with my mom. Um, so we did that on a hot day, actually. I had just had it. I'd had it with the hot weather. I'm kind of getting to that point where like, I'm thinking of all things fall and Christmas and just excited about that, so excited. One, because I want the weather. Another reason I'm not pregnant this year. <laughs> Last year I was pregnant with Samantha and everything is harder when you're, you know, in your la later stages of pregnancy. It's harder to move around and decorate. And so this year I'm not gonna have that and that's, that'll be really nice and we'll have Samantha right next to me instead. So anyway. I don't know kind of where I was, oh yeah, I was talking about because of the weather. So we went on the very last hot day of that kind of hot heat spell. And we went over, checked out Franz Witte, which is a garden center that's been around for a long, long, long time, but they had moved to a new location. So we wanted to go see what it looked like. And we were very, really, I said really and very in the same word. We were really pleased with how everything looked like. It was really pretty. Um, and then we hit a few antique stores, found some good stuff, went to lunch. It was a great day. So top comment was from Mackenzie. I think we should keep the pretty and cute counter going like a tradition. I just love these videos, excuse me, with you and your family. The love you guys have for each other is palpable through the screen and makes me smile. Keep giving us the mom and me vlogs, please. That's sweet. And the pretty and cute, yeah. We were trying to think of some different adjectives adjectives yes to use instead of we just say oh that's pretty that's so pretty look how cute that's very cute like just over and over and over again and yeah. i don't really realize it until i'm watching the video back and i'm like oh man i think i said that maybe 50 times in the video <laughs> maybe one too oh, many maybe one too many um cynthia says great trip do you did you or your mom go back and get one of those gorgeous white hibiscus plants, the one with the dark pink center. We did not. I actually have several hibiscus in our high tunnels right now that I still need to get planted. So I think we may take some out to my parents' house as well. Uh, Mama said, we have got to talk about the tailgate step. Where can we all get one? That's just like a, an add-on, right? Yeah, it's just a feature on, you can get them, I think, on any- On any Ford? Any Ford, like any trim level. Uh -huh. So you could get like the cheapest F-150 there is and still get a step, I think. And it's, you can get it like afterwards too, right? You can just have yeah, your you tailgate can replaced. Yeah, you order a, a tailgate. Uh -huh. There's really nothing that fancy about it. I mean, because oh, it's, it's well, well, I mean, it's awesome, but yeah. like, um, it's just a, it's just hidden inside the tailgate. I don't know why they don't make it standard. You know, we have one truck with it, the white one that we, were, I was driving around, and then one truck that does not have it. Yeah. You should maybe look into getting one for the gray truck. Honestly, yeah, though, it like would, it would be nice. I, it's so much easier on your body. I worry though because we keep our trucks out in the sun, and if I were to get another tailgate, I feel like the color wouldn't be the same. They'd have a hard time matching it because I don't know. Do trucks fade? Does the color know. fade in the sun? I would think it probably would. Just like over everything time. else. Yeah. I don't know. So I don't. I, I feel like we'd have a hard time matching the tailgate. Maybe it's worth just getting the whole truck repainted. <laughs> <laughs> no. New truck. Just nope. get a new truck. <laughs> Gatti said, does Aaron ever go, we don't need that or I don't like it? All the time. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> I don't ever hear the phrase, we don't need that ever. We don't do that to each other. No. Usually we're pretty good about, like you do your thing, you get your gadgetry. Yeah. I get my antiques. It doesn't mean that I like super, since I'm not into like the tech stuff, I don't really place as much value on it as you do. And that's just a natural thing. And you don't place as much value on some of the antiques I bring home. Right. But you, it's not like I, I never feel like I can't bring what I like into the house, into the house, you know? Yeah. There it are some stop things me. that I, I really don't like. Like I've, told you the table that we have in our little breakfast nook mm -hmm. area i hate that table it wobbles it does wobble it feels I'll give you that it just feels like a bad table you know the reason i bought that is we had nothing there and i couldn't find anything that i liked in that size yeah, right. and honestly too i didn't want to get anything really nice with two well at the time we had benjamin and i just yeah. thought oh man this one already had some like 
marks on the top. Yeah, it, was, and, it was marred. Yeah, and so it's kind of like our coffee table. We got our coffee table for $50 at like a scratch and dent furniture right. sale. It was a floor model, but we still have that from years and years and years ago, and I just am like, I don't really want to replace it yet. And it is nice to be able to prop your feet up on it and, and not just care. not even worry about yeah. like, if you scratch it. I am it a little or... weird about coasters, though. I never used to be a coaster person. You can see I'm not using one out here because I'm outside, but I am a little bit weirder now because we do have some very nice pieces in our house, and so I just... At this point, even if you're not using a nice piece, I kind of just want it to be a standard rule. Like, just yeah. please protect the surface from your drink. What nice pieces do we have? Uh, well, our table in the landing, um, our a would... lot of our a lot of our hutches, and they're not tables that you would necessarily be putting putting stuff on mm -hmm. a lot. But the coffee table, we would be putting stuff on a lot if I got a really nice one. Yeah. So like now, I'm like, well, every once in a while, I fill in the little dent, like the dent that would with a permanent marker yeah. it's a black coffee table i'm like well it's looking a little like these <laughs> just, will help just a sharpie yeah. <laughs> fill in those black spots it works fine and then i don't mind benjamin having his drink and food and stuff out there yeah, and right it's kind of like the carpet too i'm like well maybe we should wait another five years before yeah. we replace it it's stained really badly maybe i need to get a big area rug to cover some of it but it's almost like we almost have enough years of kids left though where we could replace the carpet now and then replace and then it again still need to replace it again because i don't know how often do people replace carpet well, with children? Let me re let me rephrase that. Like people who have kids. I don't know. I've not done a lot of carpet replacing in my life. Yeah. So I don't know what the, the what standard the time use frame on is. carpet is. The carpet we had in our townhouse before we moved here, it was kind of like it had a little bit longer of a nap on it, mm -hmm. but it was a color in the in a way that you could never see anything on it ever. Yeah. You never like saw a traffic pattern. You never saw any stuff to wear. Like I cleaned on a very regular basis or it was cleaned you know, on a regular mm -hmm. basis. But occasionally I'd sit down and like, I could rub my hand on the carpet and like, yeah. <laughs> like there's stuff on it, but you would never know it. I don't know if that's good or bad. Because <laughs> it could be harboring all kinds no, of stuff. Yeah, but, hiding in there. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't, yeah. I think there's some things that you don't love. And I'm much more eclectic than you are for sure. Oh, yeah. In our styles. Yeah. I think my, in the end, like I'm the type who wants to wait until I find things that I really like. And so I think in the end, everything will have a cohesion because everything will kind of be the same. It's just like, these are the pieces that I like. And that becomes a style in and of its own. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and you kind of like... I would rather have something as opposed to leave it an empty spot. Right. I, I like to fill in like, all the blanks. Even if you like hate hate the chair, at least you have something to sit on in that right. that spot, and then you can replace it. See, I'm different. Yeah. In that way. Because there's always Facebook Marketplace. Like you can sell stuff. And I don't do that though. No, I. Know we you. just have people come get it for free. I just yeah. I don't want to. Well, and I do that too. I give away yeah. stuff too when I don't want to mess with it. Yeah. It's like it's not worth the time most of the time. Yeah. It's like just, just. And then you feel good that at least like if you offer it to friends and family, yeah. you're like, well, at least somebody got it for free and had a great yeah. day. Yeah. Nine point nine times out of ten, some one of your friends and family will take it. Yeah. And use it, and then you feel like it's going to get more life, and I don't want to sell to friends and family. That doesn't feel right. So, anyway. Now all the people that we've sold stuff to, all friends and family, they're like, "Hey, how come?" What did we that? sell? I don't know. At some point, I'm well, sure like we a car, we sold a car to one of our yeah. family members, but that makes sense. You yeah. don't like typically just give your cars away. You do if you're David Dobrik. Well, not we're or, not or Mr. Beast. <laughs> That's we're not at that level for <laughs> sure. Uh, okay, let's move on. That was a long answer. Sorry, uh, Chris, our fan said. Couple quick questions, not really related to this video in particular. So when you select a top comment video, is that from your YouTube or Facebook? We only ever grab comments from YouTube for these videos. Um, and the top comments are usually the comments that have the most engagement. So the most likes or the most comments after it, typically, right? I always Some look for whatever comment has the most amount of likes on it. Uh -huh. And it's not always the one at the exact top. It's right. usually within like the top five. Uh -huh. But sometimes I've noticed that things at the top will have like 70 likes and then the one below it will have like 400 likes. I don't that's understand, weird. Yeah. But I grabbed the one with 400 likes because sure. to me engagement. that's like the top. Yeah. I'm always uh, watch on YouTube thinking you make more money that way. Can you explain how that works? I'm just curious. Also, if we skip watching ads, does that deprive you of income? I'm not even sure how all that works, Aaron. You probably better. I don't at... either. We are not deprived. Like we're we're doing totally fine. So. Thank do you. What, I mean, yeah, I know some you of you guys do. say you watch ads all the way through to the end, and I do think that you make a little bit more. Yeah. Um, if you if you guys watch ads all the way through, to but have I don't like want worst you to experience or no. Or do what you're gonna do. You know, we thank you for watching our videos. Like, just 
by watching our videos, whether you're skipping the ads or not, is a help to us. And I we will say we that. do for sure make more money when people watch on YouTube versus Facebook. any other platform. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a thing. But if you skip the ads, we're, we're not coming after you. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Zio said, do you have to get permission from businesses before filming in stores? I, ha you know, there's been a, on a, an occasion where I have, where I feel like you can kind of sense the room. Most businesses want you to. Like when we go through antique stores, they're like, oh, here's my card. Can you show the business name? Yeah, you know, right. um, they're just excited to have people in there. And it's just more exposure for them that they're not paying for, you know. Um, and so I, I don't think most people mind. Um, I can sense if a person does not want to be on camera. I've got a pretty good sense of that going on um, just over the years because I'm the type or was the type of person that did not want to be on camera. I don't want to be on other people's cameras. Mm. But when I'm filming myself, it's different now. Um, but I can tell when people are shy about that and I respect that big time and I don't. I make sure to like either if, ask them, tell them where I'm going to be, or I just make sure to cut them out completely. If anybody asked you not to film. Well, you, I wouldn't. You wouldn't, yeah. obviously. Mm -mm. No, never been asked not to film, though. Um, Honeydew said, I love this video and think you and your mom are just wonderful people for supporting other garden centers in your area. All ships can rise with the tide, and that is absolutely true. Do you give the other garden centers a heads up when you are coming? We don't. Uh, Franz Woody did contact us, though, and said that they were um, moving to a new location. We should come check them out at some point. So it was kind of like an open invitation whenever. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they... Meant Which is nice because you kind of knew ahead of time that they were okay with you coming and filming. Right. So it's like you didn't really need to ask permission at that mm -hmm. point. I just got a thank you card and a gift card oh, from really? them in the mail today. Nice. Yeah, yeah, which was very sweet. They did not have to do that. So that means I get to go back and get something fun. Um, okay, that was it from that video. Next video was there's still time to plant flowers and fall veggie crops from seed. And there actually still is time. Um, so I went through some of the pointers like what to look for in terms of know your last first average frost date, count back from that date to the date you're currently sitting in, and that way you know how many days you have left in the growing season. So you need to tailor whatever crops you are planting. You need to make sure that those crops have a maturity day that fit within that window. You also need to consider that as you approach fall, the days are getting shorter, nights are getting longer, temps are generally cooling off, unless you live in Eastern Oregon. Uh, and so a lot of times if you tack on an extra week or two to that maturity day of your crop, it just gives you a buffer um, because it'll take them a little bit longer to grow and mature as those days start getting cooler and, and shorter and so forth. So anyway, I just kind of went through some of that, showed you what I was planting out in the garden. I've got lots of it, they're already up like beans and peas are up cosmos are already like they just shoot out of the ground it's crazy um so yeah everything's looking good out there um scott said i've watched you guys on and off for years but man lockdown in australia has really made me appreciate the videos you guys provide i love this family thank you scott that's a really sweet comment we appreciate you watching elaine said can you do a canning video coming up is it in this one no we haven't put it up yet I just ate some of it last night and it was delicious. Um, I've never canned before and I'm nervous to try. So my mom and I did a little canning this last week and it was nothing like, it was not a canning tutorial. Um, I kind of am nervous to launch myself into that sort of realm because there are so many like staunch opinions. There is in every realm and I'm used to the gardening realm. <laughs> I can handle that. But when I get into over into the cooking part, like I just kind of do what I do. Like I don't cut things proper. I use the improper tools in the in pans like I'll use a metal whisk inside of a pan I'm not supposed to and I do not care like yeah. that's how I'm gonna do it um, and so sometimes I'm okay with like kind of like stepping over into that area and sometimes I just kind of shy away from it but we had a bunch of uh, an influx of some stuff come to ripeness need to be canned need to be <laughs> I lost it. they needed to be harvested and so my mom and I took after it anyway it, it will come up this week for you guys Emma said what type of netting do you use on your blueberries so there's just um there's just like garden netting I don't even know what it's called you get it in like a little flat bag is it really uh it's like a fine? no well I mean I think you can get different ones the ones I have it's like a hole this big that seems like it would be big enough though for a beak to get in like if there was <laughs> you changed it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember how big the netting is. I think you can get it bit different. Sure. 
Um, Cause you wouldn't, you just wouldn't want it too big. Cause otherwise they'd still know, be able to land. I and... showed some in a blueberry, blueberry video like a long time ago. Remember that? Oh yeah. Boy, that was like one of the first or second years we were making videos. Maybe you can, do you have any of that footage you yeah, could pop yeah, up? Sure. I think that was a finer, finer mesh. Yeah. Like a, yeah, it's just like a black netting. Anyway, Heather said, I would think that driving the gators on the proposed grass pathways would create ruts or damage the new grass. Is that a concern? It is a little bit. I mean, of course it is. You want your grass to look nice all the time. And that's one of my um, reservations on having grass. Now, where we live, we don't get, you guys know, a ton of rain usually. Um, we do have to irrigate our grass to keep it looking nice, but that means our soil isn't very squishy <laughs> very much of the time. And so when you're not dealing with like really um, wet soil or really bogged down soil, the likelihood to get ruts or anything like that is pretty low. Now with tractors, you did get turf tires though. Yeah. So you could still run the tractor on it and it's rare that we would be doing that. Um, but at this point, what we've decided to do, and this is just because like my, my everything about the grass, especially on the interior of the garden, like my gut says not to do it. Because I like, like I showed you in the video, I like looking down that main aisle, knowing there's gonna be a fountain in the center and the fl uh, flower shed in the back, but I love the vines and stuff kind of creeping over the edge and the flowers spilling over there's something really magical and less like you know like sharp about it i do like sharp edges though that's the thing like if i could know that the grass would look perfection all the time out there i would probably be much more apt to doing grass so what we're going to do at this point because we have to do like we have to seed the grass in sections and get it established before we can move on to another section out there um, because it's you know we have to be able to access the space um, so what we're doing now is we're doing the grass pathway that leads up to it the big loop of grass and then we're going to do the exterior so like the like u shape i guess around the garden so that the grass pathways have something to connect to around the cut flower garden that's what we're working on now and then we're just going to kind of live with it for a little while see what it looks like so the area right in front of the flower shed and then the kind of plus sign in the center will be still mulch um, that way too like I was starting to feel like I don't really want the guys to go to all that work it's gonna cost a lot of money to put in the the irrigation in there and if I just like have this feeling because there's there's several things there's the gators driving on it there's also the fountain in the center no matter what fountain I've been around they always kind of splatter and it always is really hard to keep them nice right around the edges if it's mulch it doesn't matter it can splatter away um, and that's okay and um, I don't know I just like I also want to do a meadow in the orchard and I kind of want there to be a little bit of distinction I guess and I just can't envision like grass right up to like more unkept area, I guess. How would you keep more the natural. meadow away from the mulch? Just the same way you would keep flowers in a flower bed. Mm. You just kind of kind of maintain sure. it a little bit. And that doesn't mean we won't put grass in there, but we have the ability that I, I talked to our landscaper, Benny, out there. They were getting ready to kind of do the exterior, and I just said, let's hold off on the middle section for now because I don't want to like waste their time. That We've got a lot of other projects too, like the brick walkway leading up to the front um, stairs and all that, that they're going to be working on here pretty quick. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm a slow mover anyway. So they'll get the sprinklers done out there and then we'll work on getting the grass established. We'll see what it looks like after a season and then we can add to it from there. Um, anyway, I don't know. I don't know, we'll see how it goes out there. I love the idea of grass pathways. You don't see those very often, not here. And I think that's what makes me nervous. We see them in the UK. We see them mm -hmm. in the uh, Midwest, you know, areas where they get a lot of rain. Um, it's more, much more humid. The stuff just looks better. Like it kind things, of just grows naturally. Yeah, it just or doesn't look stressed. Or at least with, with not a lot of Yeah, and I just effort. really don't want to create more maintenance out there than we need. You know, that, that frightens me and that's why We've kind of shied away from the boxwood idea at this point. Like that would look great to put a boxwood border around it and create more of a definition. But I don't really know that that's what I want from that space. I want it to be a more free space, a space that looks just more country almost with a touch of formality. You know, we'll have the, the shed, we'll have pots and stuff like that. And there's definitely like a distinct area to plant, but I just don't know that going forward, I want to have a ton of maintenance out there because I know, like I'm saying that we're just gonna do shrubs and trees and stuff out in those beds. I know I'm gonna put perennials out there just for color. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that I'm gonna to wanna to do that. So that will add an extra layer of maintenance just in and of itself. I don't know, it just seems like this big, it was this big daunting decision to me. 
So I feel like moving slower is, is a little bit better, but it's gonna be, there will be a lot of grass, even if the interior is not grassed in the end. So anyway, okay, Linda said, is your place a business or just for your family? Both. I mean, we make our YouTube videos here, which is our business. Um, and we do have help here. So Paul works out in the garden and then we have intermittent help from other people who come in and out helping us with other projects. Um, you know, of course, like Benny is a contractor who comes in and just works um, for like project based whenever we need a brick walkway or something like that done. He does that and sprinklers. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of stuff is going on here all the time, it seems like. Easy to forget person said, can you make a short video harvesting the seeds? It's so satisfying. I was actually thinking about that because I have that huge pile and then I've got some dill I wanna gather seed from and it's kind of fun. Like I know a lot of my stuff's gonna cross pollinate and I'll get some wonky kind of varieties that I can't label, but I'm not really in it for the varieties. I'm in it just to grow stuff that's pretty. And I was thinking about that, like looking at the dahlias the other day, like I just like to have a lot of different stuff out there. And I rarely look at the name of the, the flower. Like rarely will I go searching for the tag. They're tagged out there, but I don't really care. Like, I'm, I'm like this is a pretty pink one, or this is a pretty orange one or whatever. Um, so I don't know, I think that would be, that would be a fun video almost kind of like ASMR style yeah. harvesting seeds. Uh, Amanda said, are those white stakes used for labeling reusable or once used and done? Um, I use the backsides of them, but yeah, unless you have a way to like cover up the Sharpie, I don't know, is there a way to remove unless Sharpie? Unless you keep finding the same things. That's true, which right. a lot of times you do. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, next video was thinning my espalier pear tree and a fruit tree tour. It just seemed like a really good time of year to get out there. Well, I needed to give my espalier pear some um, attention big time. It was so heavy with fruit and I needed to stake up one of the sides. And then, you know, a lot of our fruit trees, they've set fruit, the apricots are done, um, and the blueberries had just recently been ravaged by uh, birds. All of the ripe blueberries were picked, but it was kind of a good time just to see a progress update on how everything was doing. So that's what the video was. Uh, Mia said, hey, Laura, can we get an update on Benjamin's butterfly garden? Uh, you know what, I just took a picture of it the other day. We should do a little tour of that because it is looking so pretty. Uh, Jean said, what can you do with the pears you pulled? Okay, so some people say you can do chutneys and stuff like that. You know, a lot of times I give the chickens a lot of our garden refuse and I meter it out actually. Like right now I'm in the process of pulling Brussels sprouts and celery. And so I only just pull one or two of the plants a day and pop it in their run um, so that they don't have like this huge massive pile. There's only four chickens. They can't like work through a ton. Um, so I meter stuff out and honestly like go, if you have a pear tree and you have extra pears and you wanna make chutney, go for it. I just don't have time to do all the projects all the time. I mean, that'd be awesome. Plus I don't eat chutney that often, so I don't know. We were talking about that because again, like there were comments about like food waste and stuff like that. And I'm like, <laughs> just go to any restaurant in your town and see what they do with all their food. Yeah. And then you won't be harassing me about <laughs> it. Um, anyway, Faith has said, what is the powdery stuff on the skin of the plums? I don't know. Powdery coating on plums. It's called, it's known as the bloom. The waxy, excuse me, silvery white substance on the surface of grapes, blueberries, and certain plums acts as a barrier against insects and bacteria, bacteria and helps to seal in the fruit's moisture. The bloom is also a sign of freshness since it fades with time and handling. Washing is still appropriate. That's interesting. Good question. Uh, Nancy said, what soil mixture are you using for the blueberries? You did a video about a mix you used when you planted up the terracotta pot. Is that what you used for all these containers? I did not. I mean, kind of, kind of similar. I used the same potting soil, um, but instead of like mixing in a bunch of stuff into the soil, like all the way to the bottom, I just mix soil acidifier kind of into the top layer where the root area is. In fact, when is August 9th? When is that day? It's today. Today is the day that I need to go add more acidifier. It says every 60 days. So I put an alert in my phone, which why didn't it alert me? Did it alert me? Maybe it will later today. Maybe so. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I need to go add more soil acidifier today. And that's just what I'm doing is soil acidifier and then the fresh potting soil. And I have the fresh potting soil all the way to the bottom of those containers. Uh, Peter said, do you enlarge the watering ring as the tree grows? We'll probably have to do that. I don't know what your what your uh, thought is on that, Aaron. I actually think we probably will replace the drip, those drip uh, every year. You think so? Yeah, because it's so they it's such a small and, amount, uh -huh. and yeah, they kind of crust up, and mm -hmm. and yes, will need to be uh, increased as like the yeah. root can or the drip line kind of increases of the plant. 
So it right. seems like it makes sense just to replace it every yeah, year and adjust right what now, you need. Yeah, because right now, you know, we're just um, we're just concerned with like keeping the root ball moist. They haven't really punched out, and like they haven't spread out into the neighboring soil that much yet. Well, if we put sprinklers out there, we'll get rid of them completely. Sprinkler? Do you think we'll put sprinklers in the flower beds? Oh, I thought we were talking about the orchard trees. Oh. Oh. Yeah, we probably are. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you're right. We'll have sprinklers in there so that we can create that meadow, in yeah. which case we'll get rid of the drip completely. Rochelle said, I thought fruit tree need less water or they wouldn't produce. So how much water do you guys give them? Super in love with this and all your videos. I need a plum and peach tree. So right now, since they're first year trees and we've been having an incredibly stressful summer in terms of heat and wind, um, they get water right now every day, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, at first they were getting water far less because we planted earlier in the spring, I, I don't know, like every three days or something like that. And then as it got warmer, we started increasing. Next year we won't have to do near as much. Next year we'll probably have the sprinklers in place. So um, yeah, I mean, once you get them established, you don't wanna water them all the time. You know, give them a deep soak less often is best, but it's gonna be different for everybody and depending on what your soil's like and where they're at, if they're really exposed, um, that sort of thing. So giving a like certain time limit is really hard. Strong Cup of Tea said, can you do an update on the honeyberry pots at the end of the cut flower garden? How are they doing? They're doing pretty good. Now I do think we need to add an extra ring of drip in there. They're looking mm. a little bit like there's been a lot of wind. So they're looking a little bit crispy on some of the leaves. Plants are doing great though. They uh, had quite a number of honeyberries and they were so good. When I was starting to eat those berries, I actually called my mom and I'm like, hey, do you guys have any more of those left down at the garden center? I really want to come get more. And they had already sold out, of course. So I told her, keep your eyes open. If you see any of your growers offering those, I would love to plant more because they're part of the honeysuckle family. So they're much more adaptable, easier to grow like in the ground for us. So if I could just pop them around, uh, it would be awesome. There are some varieties. And now I planted, um, Aaron, can you help me remember what I planted? Sugar, pie, and honey bunch. Yeah. And it was like that song. Right. Uh, and one of those at maturity will bear like up to seven and a half pounds of fruit, which that's pretty amazing. And they remind me of a huckleberry a little bit. Um, they kind of have, some people say they remind them of like a raspberry, blueberry, almost maybe even strawberry kind of cross. They just are kind of like a wild berry to me, like a huckleberry kind of wild blueberry kind of esque. <laughs> but they're big. Like some of them are pretty big, so I want more. I really, really enjoyed them. Life with Jesse B said, maybe I missed it, but what are the wooden structures in the orchard? Kind of H-shaped. So those are on the ground. Those were there to mark where we're putting our flower shed, which I think they're gonna break ground. Hopefully Chad can get over and we're gonna pour a little, little pad there. And it's gonna be, I think 17 feet wide mm -hmm. by 12 feet deep. We're actually mirroring it after like a little kit, a shed that was a kit. Um, but as we got to looking at it, it's pretty flimsy. And you guys know, I mean, based on the wind we just had this week, it, we can't just plop a flimsy shed out there. It's gotta be something that's a little bit more strong. So we're gonna actually have it like legit built. It won't be um, heated or cooled or insulated even. It'll still be a shell, but it'll be stronger than a kit. Next video was huge harvest of onions and a few other veggies. These are some of my favorite videos to do. Harvest videos where I can just get out there and pull stuff, I mean, just, it's so satisfying and we got a ton of onions. I think I counted uh, roughly over 840 onions we have harvested so far and I still have one raised bed full. So I think we'll have over a, a thousand in the end, which is way more than we need. I think we'll be giving away about 700. What do you think, Erin? I mean, cause I was thinking like one, they're not gonna store for the full year because they're not necessarily storage onions. They're high sugar content onions. They're Walla Walla's candies and white sweet Spanish. So the ones with higher sugar content typically don't store as long. I, I was able to get them quite a long time this last year, but I don't wanna waste any. So I thought, well, one onion a day is 300, 365 onions. I probably won't be using one onion a day because I don't actually cook every single day, but a lot of our meals start with onions. So if I saved 300, I think that'd be plenty. Yeah. Like even more than enough, maybe. Are you concerned about putting your local grocery store out of business by giving away so many onions? I feel like we're being so negative this video <laughs> and we need to not. Well, it's, it's not being negative. <laughs> it's like uh, you and I just making fun of some of the comments that we see occasionally yeah. like that. Like, yes. We should do us. like a mean tweets video. Yeah. Like a mean comment Like video. somehow us giving away 500 onions is going to like put somebody out of business. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be contacting the food bank. I have seen that question again. They had some restrictions in place during COVID, which I mean, with the new kind of surge number, I don't know if they're going to 
keep yeah, the may. restrictions, but they had it to where they were not taking any personal contributions at the time. Um, and so I checked into it earlier this spring and it was still in place. So I'm going to call them again and see what, if, if it's still in place, I mean, we always find homes for our produce and things. So we will find homes for it, whether or not it's a food bank or friends, family, or whoever wants to come get them. So Linda said, Benjamin is such a good helper. I love how he's so interested in everything you grow and willing to try new vegetables. He is just like, it was funny, like yesterday we were all at my parents' house because my sister's birthday and the kids, my mom always makes them this specific type of, type of noodle dish that all the kids like to eat. And we were eating Thai food, which is kind of spicy. And so anyway, they had their noodle dish and like his cousins are off playing and Benjamin's on a chair helping my mom cook the noodle dish. Like he is so engaged in it and it's just so fun to watch. And every kid is so different. I'm excited to see what Samantha's gonna be like and what yeah. she's into. It'll be fun. She loves the swimming pool, I'll tell you that. I got into the swimming pool with her yesterday and she just loves the water, loves it. I don't really know why. Yeah, okay, the, the comment was about Benjamin. I'm like, <laughs> why did I start talking about that again? Um, yeah, he is just very engaged in the process and I think it's because we don't stress him out with it. He just comes and goes as he as is natural and I try to make, like I try to hype stuff pretty pretty big time that's what my mom did she still does like everything's hyped and exciting and it makes you more excited about it doesn't yeah. matter what it is if somebody else is showing passion or excitement for it you naturally kind of feel a little bit more like that anyway uh what is the total area of your land total area is 5.6 acres i think so total with both somewhere pieces. around there yeah Christine said, how do you grow them so big? So they are heavy feeders. Uh, onions, we are in onion country. That's what, like, what does our area grow? Billion onions, billion pounds or something like that. Onions. A lot of onions. Lots in of potatoes. Our area. Potatoes and onions. Sugar beets. Corn. Field corn. Wheat. Mint. Yeah. Uh, not a ton of mint, but some mint. Some mint. Uh, beans. Mm -hmm. But not like soybeans, like bean beans. <laughs> Bean beans, <laughs> string beans. Um, what else? I see alfalfa. lettuce crops, a lot of alfalfa, some rapeseed. Um, oh, hops. Oh, lots of Not hops. Not too far away, area. there's lots yeah. of hops. And actually vineyards, a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Not so, not right here. You kind of like have to like go. 30 like 30 minutes out. Yeah, 25, 30 minutes um, out. Orchards, a lot of orchards in our area. Yeah, it's well, really, we live next to Fruitland. Yeah, where it's a heavily agricultural area. Um, but anyway, onions. Alliums in general, so any kind of like garlic onions, they're heavy feeders, so I do amend the area pretty good. Uh, with land and sea compost, the Biotone starter fertilizer, I actually did not fertilize these mid-season. They just grew like that and they just tend to, it depends on your variety too. And there are some instances, like I know I follow uh, Snake River Produce, who's a, a big um, company in our area, and they post stuff on Instagram. And I noticed after that big rainstorm, they posted a picture of one of the fields and that big rain and wind knocked over a lot of the tops. And I guess after that happens, they will stop kind of sizing up. And so they're expecting their crop, like pound yield to be smaller because they just won't, they won't be as large of onions. And I, it's interesting to follow um, like professional growers in the area and see what they're doing and what they, you know, how they're reacting to some of these weather things and what it does to our crops. Um, so, you know, I was glad to, that mine were able to size up. Not all of them were very big. Um, the initial crop I planted wasn't as big as the second crop I planted. So you know, every year is a little bit different too. Last year I got some candies that were like, do you remember that? Yeah, they were massive. They were so big and so good. Um, and Manster said, does that tractor have AC? Yes. <laughs> if you would have not cut the video up, you would have seen me sitting in that cab several times. Just really? sitting in the cab. Yeah, drinking my ice water in the AC. Um, only asking because I noticed the enclosed cabin and you're working in such high heat. Yeah, I, it's such a huge blessing to have that cab. That was kind of one of your things that wasn't it, Aaron? Like if we're gonna use it in the summer or the winter for snow removal, we wanted the ability to actually use it and not be miserable. Yeah, I watched, I watched a lot of videos about whether to get a cab or not. Because there's a lot of pros to not having a cab too. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, decided to go with the cab. I'm so glad you did, because it's it's comfortable to use. Yeah. And you notice I picked that over the gator. I didn't necessarily need to have the tractor, although it does, it's nice to be able to use pallets. And that's kind of the reason why I chose it. Yeah. But I wouldn't didn't necessarily need to. Sure. I can move the pallets around in the gator too. Uh, Patrick said, when did y'all upgrade the tractor to the 4066R? That if was... anybody is interested in a 30, was it, what is it? Uh, 32... 3039R. 
Yeah, that one's sitting on consignment at our local <laughs> John Deere <laughs> dealer. Um, anyway, you can talk about that. Why well, you it really just comes down to, well, two things. One, um, I didn't realize that the 3039R, which was the smaller tractor, was so tippy. And yeah. we could have fixed that by putting wheel spacers on it. Um, how far out does it, how far out do wheel spacers? Oh, you can get them in a lot of different sizes. Oh, really? I want to say maybe like six inches is typical. Mm. Um, that's does that a, add a lot of stability? It does, well, think about it, a foot. I mean, you're adding a, six inches on both sides. So, you know, if you go out six more inches, that'll help your wheel spacing. Anyway, um, I could have also added some ballast to the wheels to mm. help with the tippiness, but um, the biggest issue was that it couldn't lift enough. Yeah. And we get pallets of, we get pallets of fertilizer or mulch or mm -hmm. you know, whatever, and you have to take a number of bags off the pallet in order for it to be able to lift it, and that was kind of a bummer. Mm -hmm. So we decided it would be worth it to. It also has a self-leveling loader. Yeah, That's this one has the self-leveling loader. Pretty big, especially for me. <laughs> It also has this, like, um, I'm sure there's a name for it. I just call it, like, it creeps, essentially. So if you're trying to hook up an implement and you have to get off and hook it up, you know, manually, you can have the tractor back up or go forward mm -hmm. at, like, a tenth of a mile an hour. It mm -hmm. just really creeps forward or backward. Mm -hmm. And that's really nice. Like, if you're hooking up a trailer, yeah. oftentimes, if you're by yourself, you can get within, like, an inch or two. Mm -hmm. But if you just need it to move that extra inch or whatever, you can... There's a button on the back of the tractor to have it mm -hmm. just move just a little bit. So, self-leveling loader, just so you guys know who are maybe familiar with equipment. But you know, like, how... Pa uh, forklifts they come in and they just kind of like they lift it without like doing a bunch of tipping with our first tractor that was smaller you'd come in and you lift and then you'd have to adjust like down because you would lift and it would lift it up like this right and yeah. so you'd have to continually like lift a little bit straighten it lift straighten lift straighten that's hard when especially when people are watch, watching and there's not enough one. hydraulics to be able to make to do it at the same time you ha you can only do one function at a time and just yeah and i think with some other tractors there are other tractors out there that can do uh, both, uh -huh. like they have enough hydraulic uh, flow to be able to do both at the same time. So maybe like the Kubota people out there are going to be like, oh, your John Deere can't do that. I don't know what the case is. Maybe Kubota the can't do The reason why it. we went with John Deere, I mean, we're all just kind of all in with John Deere because we have a dealership, like that's who's in our area. That's who can a, service and maintain our Yeah, we don't have a vehicle. Kubota dealer and we don't have Hi, bud. Any, but any other brand really. Yeah. So it just made sense. And then once you kind of go in, like we're kind of like that with DeWalt tools. Once you're in it, yeah. all your batteries are interchangeable. So you kind of just are in it. Well, like, you get that's... to know the salesperson that you work with the you know, then the, the people that work on your equipment. Poor Dan. And... You're like <laughs> constantly texting him like, hey, I saw this new implement. Can you give me a quote on yeah. this? Or can we trade this for this or whatever, you know, or yeah. what should we do about this? We've like, given really them good. plenty of business though. So I don't, <laughs> I don't worry too much about wasting this time. Yeah. So the nice part is that when you pick up pallets with this one, one, it can handle the weight and two it doesn't it just lifts it straight um and you know everybody tells you like with a greenhouse or what whatever get like figure out what you want and then buy the big buy the one bigger one a step bigger than that because you'll always need more capacity than you you know have and it really comes down to like people have asked why didn't you get a bigger hartley i'm like um <laughs> That's all we can do, like, and that is perfect. I, <laughs> like, you step up in size and our eighth, yeah. The cost goes. Well, that's why we went with the smaller tractor. We we're like, well, this is the one that we can like comfortably like kind of jump into, yeah. and hopefully it'll do what we need. But in the end, that was the one time where we like we should have jumped up and maybe yeah. waited to buy it. The other reason, and I didn't know at the time, but um, it the three thirty thirty nine R, you call it the three series. That was the largest John Deere tractor you could get while still getting an underbelly mower. Mm. And I thought by putting all this grass out there that I may end up wanting to mow with that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think... I, I've read enough from people who say that the underbelly mower on that series tractor is really not that great. Mm -hmm. um, and the four series tractor, which we just got, you, you can't do an underbelly mower. It has to be like a flail mower or a finish mower behind mm. the tractor. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, that was another reasoning for why I thought I wanted the three series, but turns out that wasn't. This should just be wanted. a John Deere video: <laughs> <laughs> what to buy and what not to buy, and what things are. It's tough, man. Yeah. When you're trying to, fit, and especially me being like a city kid, you know, I don't know any of this stuff. I've never. I love it though. It's so fun to me that you actually like you got into it. Yeah. Like just by yourself. Like nobody was. You just did. Yeah. I think that's really fun. It's fun for me because that's how I grew up. 
we didn't have a tractor, but I grew up around equipment and stuff like that. Can you do an update on the 10 containers at the city splash pad? No, we cannot because they stopped watering them at some point. I, it, I don't know how long they stopped watering. You know, when we drove by, there was a couple that looks looked like, like they were still alive, maybe? Kind of. Like half of them, half the planter's dead, and then there's like a couple plants that are still languishing but still alive. Well, okay, so let's put it this way. If they were on our property, they would have been tossed. Oh, yeah. They, a they, long time ago. They're at the point where, like, you would just... you. Say, yeah. oh, okay, that was a failure. We're gonna. Yeah, move we'll on. try again next year. Get somebody on a better schedule. To, you know, like Aaron, you largely maintained them for the first month. We planted them, and then they, you agreed to uh, go in and keep them topped up with water and stuff until they their opening day. So we, yeah. I think we planted them up like the very last part of April, first part of May, and then they opened on the twenty something, twenty eighth or twenty first or something like that of May. Yeah. So you maintained them that whole time, right. and then that might have been the last time they got water. I just don't, I, that can't be true though, because they've been getting water at some point. I just don't know when. Yeah. Anyway, so kind of a bummer on that front. So no new uh, update on those. Okay. Let's move on to the next question, which is storm or question video, which is storm aftermath cleanup and blue spruce removal. So we lost the great big blue spruce in the front of our garden, which is kind of the centerpiece plant, one of my favorite trees. But again, I feel like we are kind of realists in this way. Like it was, it, it was and is a huge bummer to have that tree gone. I learned something though along the, along the way. I mean, that root ball was still in the wire basket with rope still attached. So we learned, well, we learned something from it. Um, and I think there's so much change going on in this garden and so much of it doesn't look great right now that it's just adding one more area to the list for me. So maybe it was a blessing that it happened this year and not another year where I feel like everything was starting to kind of come back together and start to look really pretty. Um, it's an airplane. Loud. It is, it's kind of probably, where is it? I don't even see it. Huh, that was weird. Anyway. I never in a million years thought that tree would come down. Me either. I think I took it for granted. I think that we do, we tend to. Like there's this old huge tree that looks beautiful and you never think about it being gone. I can see the mulberry tree falling down. Yeah, one of the I willows. I can see the willows. I can yeah. see the locusts coming down. The ash tree in the, the driveway yeah, that's half Yeah, the ash tree sick. in the driveway, man. Yeah, that one should have come down a long time ago. Yeah, but I, I thought that spruce was going to be there forever. I know. I didn't know that people call them widow makers because they tend to not send out like really strong like tap roots or anything like that. They're more surface. So, you know, they can catch wind and sometimes they can't handle it, especially if the root ball was still left in a basket. Um, I don't know. It's just, it, it's a, a bummer, but it's something that we just have to deal with and move on. And there's really no sense in getting bogged down by stuff like that. And that's kind of my MO in life. Like, that's why I don't like to watch a bunch of news and stuff because I do not do well being bogged down yeah. by, um, by sadness and I think you and, and I are both pretty pragmatic though. And neither one of us are the type to cry over spilled milk. Yeah. It's like, it's, it happened. It happened. You, you can't, can't do anything. You can't, change you can't it. replant it. Yeah. Like, so many people were like, pull it back up and replant it. I'm like, did you see it? Like it had hardly any roots left and how unsafe that huge, heavy tree. You'd have to cable it from every single direction, every degree. Like it needs stakes all the way around it. I'd never be comfortable around that tree. Um, anyway. Catherine said, when Laura's handed lemons, she not only makes lemonade, but also lemon cookies and lemon cake and lemon muffins. <laughs> <laughs> Your outlook on life and adversity is wonderfully refreshing. Thank you for saying that. Um, you know, it's not always like that. I do get bogged down sometimes. I get, um, uh, recently, there was a little five-year-old boy that went missing in our area, like 10 minutes away from where we live, and it's making me lose sleep. Like, it was over a week ago, and he still hasn't been found, and that's the kind of stuff that, like, who cares if you lose a tree? Yeah. You know, who cares? Like perspective on life. Um, anyway, like that kind of stuff just, I can't, I can't, I can hardly handle it. I yeah. can hardly think about it. And I, I don't know him personally. I don't know the family. I don't know the little boy. Um, anyway. Okay. So CV said, do you and Aaron have any trees planted with the cages left on? If so, and if they aren't yet rooted in, are you now considering digging up and removing the cages? Um, so one of the blue spruces of all trees, <laughs> we planted three in this, uh, what is that? Northwest corner. Um, we planted three blue spruces and one of the root balls was left in the cage. And I did not know that. Remember at the end, you told me that one of them still had a cage on it. And so I told you guys, we need to dig it up. And then you said, no, I don't think we need to. I'm going to do some research. And I think you found all the positive research. 
like you've you kind of find it found the answer that you wanted maybe instead of maybe well, the okay. best so answer. So here's the, the difference <laughs> is that they didn't remove any of the twine on the one that came down. Yeah. And we did remove all the twine. Uh, it's like plastic twine. Is, is that still twine? Yeah. So that twine had been under the ground for 30 plus years and it looked brand new. Yeah. It came up out of the ground looking brand new. There was no deterioration at all on it. So maybe because the basket was starting to rust. Yeah, the basket was falling apart. I don't really think it was the basket that was the issue. I think, it, I well, it's hard to say, but I think the twine maybe was more of an issue because there was a lot of twine wrapped around the, the very bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the wire basket is so, the holes are so large that there's no issue with the roots, like rooting out from that. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it was the basket that was the issue. It was the string. I think it was the fact Holding that it was... Holding everything together. Yeah, it was the string that was wrapped know. around the roots. But I would like to dig around that area. Not like necessarily lift the tree out because the basket doesn't go... I don't think it went all the way underneath because it's held together if you if you cut that string. We could dig down the sides of that root ball and just clip off the basket. Even if we clip off sections yeah. and we don't leave it all the way around the root ball, I think I'd feel better about that. Even if like two sections of it was cut out and then we just, you know, filled back in. Sounds like a good job to hire a neighbor kid for. Maybe. <laughs> Anybody looking for some extra hours? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Next question was, what will you be doing with those pine cones? So Benjamin and I gathered a crate of pine cones. There's still a few out there that were left on the ground. So I'm going to gather the rest of those. I like to use them in arrangements in wreaths for all the holidays. I kind of want to make some garlands this year. Um, so that's what they will be used for. It'd be kind of fun to have like this little piece from that tree. That is one of the big things I'll miss that tree from. I hardly ever cut any greens from it because I didn't want to rob from the canopy. Maybe I should have. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but the cones, I always had cones at my disposal and beautiful ones, like the real narrow, beautiful structured cones. So I will miss that. Well, yes, I said, just curious and not wishing any, will, any ill will to the Hartley knocking on wood, but how would that work if the Hartley got damaged? Did it need to be insured or is that a huge out of pocket cost to repair? Oh, you want me to answer? <laughs> Well, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're just looking at me. Yeah, I think I asked you about it the other night. We never really came to yeah, it. Yeah, it's not insured currently. Um, I will, at some point, put it. Um, we're kind of working on insurance stuff right now, oh. actually. So that's probably just something that we'll, mm -hmm. we'll add on there. Yeah, if you guys are ever wondering what Aaron's doing while I'm out filming, that's the kind of stuff he handles. Yeah. Like, all oh, the business end of everything. Like, I'm kind of... It's like surprisingly a lot yeah. as you start... Like building a business? Oh my, yes. Uh, Annabelle said, after this incident and the feedback from the tree guys, why are you choosing to keep the big tree by the house? Wouldn't it be better to be safe than sorry or is there more to it? So that huge juniper, I showed that in the video and how we kind of both ran over there to double check. I think juniper sent down like huge root, huge Even roots. if they didn't, um, I'm not too worried about it falling on that side of the house. Nobody um, lives on that side of the house. Nobody lives on that side yeah. of the house. We don't have any bedrooms. Mm -mm. So... Uh, there are bedrooms on that side. Yeah. No one sleeps in them at night. Yeah. So I'm not super concerned mm -hmm. because uh, it would, you know, we just file an insurance claim and You want to build it, build it again anyway. Yeah. We have to tear it apart, you guys, because we have to rewire. It's all old wiring on this side of the house. So we've got to rewire the whole shoot and match anyway. Like yeah, it's... we're kind of at a, at a conundrum where <sighs> it, it feels like we, we almost need to gut the old side of the house to get to update the wiring and and everything else too you know there's a lot of other things that we could we could do mm -hmm. like we've talked about putting a, a bathroom on that side there's currently no bathroom no bathroom on the old side on of the, the house. old side of the house yeah. and it, it sort of feels like it's not all that usable because of that mm -hmm. so we're talking about a lot of different options i suppose yeah who knows um, Brian said, did you get to keep your own wood chips from the spruce? Yes, we did. They are in a pile on the far corner. We haven't spread them out yet, but they're sitting there. Sharon said, why don't we see baby girl? Just because it's so hot. I mean, we do our projects outside for the most part and it's so hot out there right now and mosquito ridden at the moment. They just yeah. showed up this last week that we just don't naturally bring her out. We're not gonna stage our kids in videos or try real hard to get them in videos um, on purpose. Uh, it's just always, however, it comes up naturally. Uh, so she's just naturally inside a lot more. We come out late in the evenings when it's cooler out. 
uh, we go for gator rides every single night. She loves gator rides. It's so cute. She just squeals like, like the whole time. Loves it so much. She has like a hard time breathing. Sometimes. Yeah, she's just like Eah! yeah. She's like <laughs> I love yeah. it so much. Yeah, it's <laughs> so cute. And her arms just waving. Yeah. Um, she really likes to be on the gator. Uh, and yeah, so we just bring her out when it's more comfortable. It's just been so darn hot. Um, Art Lady said, can you replant the tree? No. I mean, I wish we could. I heard of some people saying, well, I had a plum tree grow, go down and we, we popped it back up. Hi, buddy. What are you doing? Good. Um, you know, I heard, so I think I was just saying, I heard several of you said, well, there was uh, some trees that, like a plum tree that fell down and you were able to set it back up. I think in some cases it may work, maybe for something smaller for this big one with the amount of root loss, it just wasn't possible. I mean, it wasn't even a consideration really with how it came down. Uh, Crystal said, how did your mom's garden do through the storm? Hers did just fine. Hi, baby. Oh. I'm going to stand here and close the door. Oh, you need to close the door? Okay. Yeah, go do that. Now, now stand Okay. Um, their house is kind of protected up there. I'm it's like... i not words. You're, okay, you're not going to say any words? No. <laughs> we just tell them when we're filming. Gotta be quiet, buddy. Okay. Um, so their house is kind of at the, it's like nested down, just down off the top of a hill. And then the rest of their gardens up, like it's, the hill acts as a windbreak. Um, so while it does, like there'll be branches and leaves and stuff around and their swimming pool gets just wrecked. But they don't, they don't have damage like we do. Ours is just completely exposed. And it's like whatever storm hits us doesn't necessarily hit them. A lot of the times we get separate storms. We're just like far enough apart and we're like on opposite ends of the valley. Like they're on one side of the valley and we're kind of cruising toward the other side of the valley and things just get broken up. Um, I'm not sure how that all works, but anyway, I, I mean, I'm glad. I don't want anybody's garden to go through, you know, get ravaged by storms. That's a bummer for anybody. Um, so anyway, yeah, theirs didn't sustain any damage during that time. I don't think, did it? No. I don't think it did. So like that one year that we had the crazy hailstorm come through, right before, two weeks before we were having a garden tour and it just shredded our plants. My parents' garden, untouched. Untouched. <laughs> Are I was you better like, about that? Well, just anybody's garden who was untouched, I'd be yeah. like, oh, must be nice to have nice hostas. Yeah. <laughs> Mine are shredded. Anyway, yes. And that is the end of today's recap video. Uh, far fewer videos this week. Far fewer. Did we skip two days? No, just one. Oh, seemed like, it does seem like that went real fast today. Probably because you grabbed all the questions and you didn't grab as many. Maybe. Yeah. I hope you guys all have a really great week. I'm hoping by the end of this week, I can show you a picture of the finished and bricked Hartley. Um, and then, I don't know, we've got some fun stuff coming up, except for the heat. I, I really wanted to plant some perennials today and I just don't think it's a wise thing to do. I think we're just gonna hunker down in maintenance and harvest mode for a little while. And that's just how it's gonna be. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye. I think so too. You have been chill. <laughs> Good job, chill. bud. I love it when you're chill. Good job. Are we going back inside now? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. We're all done. Okay. Okie dokie.